We have an A here and a B here. What does the A tell me? Every single time on any equation. What does that A when it's in standard form, no brackets, tell you? How it ends on the right. The leading coefficient always tells you how it ends on the right. So this one here, A is greater than zero. So what does it do? It ends what on right? If A is greater than zero, what do you think it's going to end? Up. And this is a linear equation because it's AX1 plus B, it's a degree 1. And when it's a degree 1, if it ends up on the right, we know that if it's a degree 1, it does what on the left? Down on the left. What does this tell me? What's my B in this equation? One. It's a y intercept. It's a constant at the back. It doesn't have a variable with it, right? So this is telling me that my y intercept is positive. So I know it's up on the right, down on the left. It's going to do something like this, right? And I'm going to have to have a positive y intercept. Can we agree? So I'm going to sketch one. Not a lot of thought put into it. Did I cover what I needed to cover? Yeah. Up on right, down on left, positive y-intercept. What if I put it down here? No. It's up on right, it's down on left. But my y-intercept is negative. Yeah. Right? So I can't actually give this dotted one. Plus it's not straight. There's also had that problem. But, you know, I thought it was straight until I looked at it. So I could also go like this. Would this be good? Up on right, down on left, positive y-intercept. Would that still work? Yeah. So it can be even less slanted or it could be even more slanted. It could go like this. Up on right, down on left, positive y-intercept. All three of those would work for this instance, correct? So you're going to have the different variances between B, C, and D. We're going to go to E. What's the difference in E? It's a degree 2. So it's a quadratic. And quadratics aren't straight lines. What do they make for a graph? Parabola. Parabola. So they're like this, boom, boom, or they're like this, boom, boom. Ooh, what did I forget up here? Domain and range, lap. What's the domain of this one? X and L of the reals, yes. Because it's discoing, right? And what's my range? Same thing. Same but thing why? because, but why? Yeah. Because it's and discoing. L yeah, it's L of the reals. Keeps going on for life, up and down, right and left, correct? When it just goes, it's XER, YER when it's not a word problem. Kiefer, you really shoved yourself right back, hey? No. <laughs> you just straight faced me to almost make me believe it. Except it's November like 17th, and that's not true. All right. Um, AX squared plus, isn't it? AX squared plus BX plus C. This A is my leading coefficient, and A is greater than 0. So what does that tell me? It ends up on right. So my A value, my A value tells me how I end on the right, and what tells me how I end on the left? Rhymes with Fabrice. The degree, not Fabrice, but that is a good idea. <laughs> the degree. So this is a degree 2. So if it's an even degree, what happens on the left? The exact same as what happens on the right. So if it ends up on the right, it's going to end up on left. Yeah. So all the degree twos, if, if it's up on right, it's up on left, right? But the degree ones and threes are opposites. Now, what does this C do? C is greater than zero. What does that tell me? It's a what? Positive y-intercept. Right, Kira? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. No? Good. Yeah. Life, is <laughs> Life is complete. You know? I got people off of my horse skating night. I got people off of truck. <laughs> <laughs> Glad I don't drive at the same time. Okay, 
So, how is this one going to look? It's going to be concave up. It's going to be concave up. And what's the only key thing? There's a positive. Positive y-intercept. So I could like go like, Whoa. I could do that, correct? I could do this. Couldn't I? Could I go like this? Yeah. Could I even just like, I'm going to use a different color. Could I just have one x-intercept and go like this? Does that work too? Yeah, all have positive y-intercepts. Yeah, I could have zero this one. I could have two. All positive y-intercepts. You mean, look at the left. So look at this. Yeah, just get the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> shape up or shape up, okay? All right, we have F, G, and H for you to do after that. Now let's go down to I. What's the difference with I? Ooh, duh, domain and range. <laughs> Did it again. What's my domain? X such that. What's my domain? Shh. Great. X and L are the reals. Yeah. Now my range changes depending on um, what you make your minimum. So I'm going to pretend this is my minimum, and I'm going to make it be negative four. Like I'm going to tell. So all of you would have different numbers probably, correct? Because it depends on how, what you sketch. But my range on this one here, I would say y such that y has to be what? They're all going to be greater than or equal to, right? Because they're concave up. The only difference is going to be your number depending on what you get. Negative 4, y here. And degree 2 are the only ones that don't have x, e, r, y here. Yeah. Okay, then we're going down to I. What's the difference in I? To degree 3, also known as a what? Cubic. And remember that degree 3 or cubics have either two turning points, like a max or a min, or they have this. What's this called? Point of inflection. So a point of inflection is actually zero terms. Turning, that's your terms. Zero turning points. And this would be a max and a min, which would be two turning points. We agree? Now, nothing specifies about them having a point of inflection or maxes or min, so you could try either version. It doesn't matter for any of these because I didn't give you that specification because the outcomes I'm covering right now aren't about points of inflection or about maxes and mins. They're about end behaviors and y-intercepts. Correct? So, what does the A here do? Well, it's the leading coefficient. And the leading coefficient tells me how I end on the... Or right. So, if, it's a, <laughs> if A is greater than 0, I end what? End up on right. Has that changed? Did, depending if it was degree 1, 2, or 3, did any of that change? Nope. If A was greater than 0, it ended up on the right. It's the left that changed depending on the degree. Right? And this is a degree 3, which is an odd degree. So because it's an odd degree, degree 3, if it ends up on the right, it ends down on left. Down on left. Because degree 1 and degree 3 just go, right? Degree 3 just has some crazy things going on in the middle. And then D is greater than 0. What does that do? What do I have of a y-intercept? A positive. So I know it's going to look something like this, or it could look like this, right? I know it has to end up on the right and down on the left. I didn't tell you if it has to have a maximum or point of inflection, so it could be either of those. But the key thing is it has to have a positive y-intercept. So I can go like this. Would that work? Down on left, up on right, positive y-intercept? Yep. Or I could do something like this. Regressive. I went past the equation, but <laughs> still up on right, down on left, still a positive y-intercept, right? So there's three more of each. 
every variance where a's are greater than zeros or a's are less than zeros and d's are greater than zeros and d's are less than zeros. So every y-intercept is going to flip-flop. You're going to have to do each kind. So there are four or nine more for you to do. We're going to go through the actual answers tomorrow. Work through them quickly because we have to go on to something different. We're learning stuff on our calculators. Record. Um, on your instruction sheet, the front part is actually what we're not looking at today. I put it on the front because it's what you'll actually look at more to remind yourself of because you're going to know these other steps so well in two days um, that you'll find it easy. Now, I'm forewarning you that you can make this class as painful or as painless as you want it to be. If you pay attention and listen and don't be distracted, this isn't overwhelming at all, not in the least, okay? But if you don't pay attention and then you start paying attention partway through, you're going to be one of those people being like, what? What did you do? Huh? What was the question? What was the next step? What did we? And then you get freaked out. So we're going to calm ourselves. No. No, Cooper. Okay. So the front gives us the steps once we actually have our equation to our calculator. What we're going to look at here is this regression equation sheet. It's the back part. It's actually the back side. So regression equations is a graphing calculator. So you need to have your graphing calculator out. Now, what we're actually going to look at is we're going to look at this first part of that sheet that I handed to you. Now, this here is actually um, some data given to us. If we don't have our calculators, we would have to somehow, which I don't know how, um, turn this data into a linear line. So these are all coordinates. There's a coordinate at 1996 on the X and 78.04 on the Y, right? These are all just coordinates. This is a table of values, just coordinates. We agree? So this one has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 coordinates on this graph. Boom, 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 boom. Now, what the calculator does, because it's amazing, is it will find a line of best fit for you. It will find a linear equation for you. You will type this stuff in, you will press some buttons, and magically, poof, an equation will appear. It's like the greatest thing ever. Okay? The catch is there are two different types of calculators, the older and the newer, um, and sometimes you don't know which one you have. So you're going to have to pay close attention because there's going to be a point where you're going to put your calculator down if you have the older ones or put your calculator down if you have a newer one, and you'll figure out which calculator you have as you go along. Okay? So... We need to somehow get this list into our calculators, these lists, so that the calculator can do some math for us, correct? So if you look on the back here, it says A. With A, it says, enter data into lists. So here it says, graphing calculators have a feature that performs statistical analysis of data to determine an equation for a line or a curve best fit. This line or curve best fit is called a regression equation. So it might not fit all the data. It might just be the line of best fit. The line of best fit might actually fit every single one of those points. It might be perfectly accurate. And when we get to B, you'll see how we can tell that. Now, we have to get this into our calculator. So it says, press STAT. Everyone follow along. Like I said, it'll seem overwhelming at first. So we're going to go STAT. And then it says what? Then, edit. Then enter the values into list 1 and list 2. Well, this first one is your list one, and the second one is your list two. If, now paying attention, put your calculator, put all, everything down. If you have something in your list, and I'm going to tell you this, because if, if I don't tell you this, you're going to mess it up. So say we have stuff in our list. I don't know why I just put plus, but whatever. Oh my gosh, I really want to press plus signs. Quick. Step. <laughs> Tab nine, three, six, five, and then this one has like some numbers in it. And I want them to go away right? I want the whole list to, do I want the list to delete and go away? Or do I want the list to clear? Clear. clear. If you get the, de list, the list to delete, you're actually going to take list one and you're going to delete the whole thing. So then all you're going to have is list two, three, four, five, and you're going to be calling me over and you'll be like, Blah, help me. I don't have all the lists. And I'll be like, dude, you pressed delete, didn't you? And you're like, yeah. We said. So we don't want to be there. So does everyone have them to start with? Mm -hmm. Does everyone have it? No? Do you have list one, list two, list three? You should have them all. Okay. Now, paying attention, if you want to clear them, you want to clear the list. You don't want to delete them. So you're going to go up to the top. Are you paying attention? And you'll go clear 
Enter, and it, up to the top left, up to the top. Listen to your own instructions. Clear. Ooh, I arrowed myself down. <laughs> Clear. Enter. That was ridiculous. And then up here. Clear. Enter. Don't press delete. Enter. Your list will delete. Because that's what you told it to do. You deleted it. Let, let's say in theory. <laughs> Second. If you deleted your list already because you weren't listening, you're going to go second plus sign number seven over to all. Enter, yes, enter. It'll reset your whole calculator. That's the only way you get it back. Okay. So, stat edit. We're there. Start typing your stuff into your list. Go. <laughs> Type in your stuff so we get 1996. Enter. Shh. 1998. Enter. 1999. Enter. And just so you know, the other class didn't make one peep. They followed along perfectly. It's never happened in my time. I would like it to happen twice in a day. This would be remarkable. So if you follow along, you won't freak out. An arrow over. Shouldn't look like anything because you shouldn't have anything to look at. Oh, I got problems. So, see, I look here and I say, hey, I got problems. And why do I say, hey, I have problems? Because my lists are not the same length. They have to be the same length. So I'm going to go over here and, oh, I missed 2009. Now they're the same length. If they're not the same length, you got problems. Yeah? My when I tried to put in like the last um, thing in this too. You have to go back to it. I don't know what. <laughs> you might have put it in with two decimals or something. Okay. Oh, never mind. Fine. Okay. Okay. We're here. We're not doing anything else because Left didn't tell us to do anything else. We don't try and go ahead. We don't try and overachieve because overachieving makes me more work because you don't overachieve. You do something wrong. Okay? So we're not going to overachieve. We're not going to try and work our way ahead in the list. We're not going to go ahead in the steps. We're going to listen. Okay? So we're done A. Now B, we aren't going to have to do B every single time. The only time you're going to have to do B is if your calculator gets reset. It turns on the correlation coefficient. So if you look at B, it says turn R squared value on, which is the correlation coefficient. So we're going to go second, because it says second, and then zero. And then a list comes up. And it says, scroll to diagnostic on. So you, it's alphabetical. So you're going to scroll for a while. Now, it'll get you there, but with some of them, with not some of them, though. So you have to watch because you do not pick diagnostic off. You're going to have to start over again. There's two of them. You want diagnostic on. <laughs> okay, once you get to here and it's on your screen, you're going to hit enter. Then it says hit enter until it says done. See, I'm following the instructions. Did it say done yet? Mine doesn't, so I'm going to have to enter again. <gasps> there it is. Oh my God. The steps work. It's crazy. Okay. C says, 
identify the type of polynomial. So in this question, it will tell you what it is. I'm telling you it's a linear regression. Or sometimes what they'll say is an equation in the form y equals ax plus b. Because in the form y equals ax plus b is a linear regression, right? This is a linear equation. You need to know that that is a linear. So they either can use the word linear regression, or they can say in the form y equals ax plus b, because that's linear. We agree? Okay. Yeah. What does that say before regression? Like below linear? Or that's just a squiggle about the linear. word and. Um, it's a bracket. Okay. So put your calculators down. You're paying attention. Put it down. <laughs> Stop over G. Calculators down, not doing any extra steps, not going along on your own. Stop, 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 you stop, stop, just and stop. Put down your calculator, stop overachieving. Okay. Because you'll miss out on stuff that's not on the chart. Okay. So, the correlation coefficient, which is the R squared value that's going to show up. We haven't dealt with it yet, but I just want to explain what it is. So, what you're going to do is you're going to be given, this one was nine coordinates, correct? Nine coordinates that were plotted, and then it finds the line of best fit. We agree? So, the R squared value is the correlation coefficient. What it is, is it just literally tells you how much your equation correlates the data together. So, an example, if this is my graph and these are my coordinates, let's pretend all the coordinates fall like that. And then it gives me a linear equation like this. Pretend this is perfectly straight. Did I just paint over every single one of the points? No. I didn't. So I painted over all of the points and it's a straight line. So in this case, my R squared would equal 1. Because 100, R squared is in decimal per, like percentages. So that's 100% of my data lands on that. That's the best equation you could possibly pick for this data because it all fits on it. Correct? Now, if majority of it fits on it, you would get like 0 0.99, 0 0.96. Those are still really high. 96% of the dots fit. 97% of the dots fit. That's still high. How you get a low correlation coefficient is if you had like points like this, and then they drew a line through it. How much of your data lands on that line? A whole lot of nothing. But it's close enough. This would probably be like a 0.5 correlation, so 50% of it would kind of fall into it. So what happens is, because you, you can't see all the dots that I drew in here, right? Like, they're on the line. So you don't know what it is. So the higher the correlation coefficient, the closer it is to 1, the better the regression you picked fits it. Now remember, we're going to be able to pick a linear, a quadratic, and a cubic. We're going to be able to have all three options, correct? So we're going to want to pick the one with the highest R squared value. Now, 99% of the time, they tell you what regression to find. So you just find that regression. You don't go and test all of them and say, oh, you want me to find linear? But cubic has a better regression, or a better R squared value. It doesn't matter. If they want linear, you find linear. If they want quadratic, you find quadratic. If they want cubic, you find cubic. The only time the R squared value matters is if they don't tell you which one to look for, and you type them all in, and you look for the one with the highest R squared value, because it best fits the data. Does that make sense? The R squared value never goes away unless your calculator is reset. OK. This is where we pray for you to listen. We're all following along. Jackson's going to go back to where we were. So we're at a table. We're going to go back to that table just to be at that spot because we don't have to do correlation coefficient every time. So we're going to go stat, edit. That's our first step. And we plug everything in. Correct? That was A. Everyone have that in their list. Their lists are the same length. You don't have one list longer than the other or something, and then you're going to call me over and say, it doesn't work. Five seconds from now. Are your lists the same length? Okay. So, then we're going to go to, actually, D. You're going to have to, we're going to veer after D to newer calculators and older calculators. So, this is where I'm going to need your help for you to stop when I tell you to stop, okay? So, we want to calculate a regression. So in D, it says press stat. So after you've done this, you press stat. Then you press the calc menu. For this unit, we are only going to use four 
five, or six. If you're pressing anything else, you're getting the question wrong. There's no like, I wonder if I'm going to, you're going to get the question wrong. None of the rest work. We're not doing a unit on anything else. So four, five, or six. I told you this is a linear regression, so which one are we picking? Four. Don't pick any other ones. Don't pick eight. It's backwards. Okay, four, five, or six. So we're going to pick four. Stop here. Halt. If you have this menu, keep holding your calculator. If you do not have this menu, put down your calculator. I was waiting for you because that one for sure does not have this menu. Okay? If you have this menu, you're holding the calculator. If you don't have this menu, you are not. Okay? If you have this menu, you are looking at the bottom bullet that says newer calculators, and for that matter, I would highlight it. So if you have this menu, you would highlight everything but the older calculator section. So we'll highlight the rest later, but for right now, you're going to highlight newer calculators. Okay? Because you have a newer calculator. That's just what you have. Not better or worse. You just have a newer one. Okay? So you're here. So you're going to follow the newer calculator buttons. Listen? The newer calculator buttons. So we're going to go, after picking the regression, boom, we're here. We pick the regression. Then what we need to do, paying attention, this is what we're doing. If we go down to calculate it, it would calculate the equation just fine. It would. It would give it to you. But what we want to do is not calculate it and then have to transfer all those decimals all the way to y equals. So don't, pay, don't, don't do this. You're just watching. I'm going to undo what I did. This is stupid. So I just go down here and I hit enter, and it's going to give me the equation. If I just go and do this, I'm going to have to copy all these decimals off. So I'm going to have to go 0 0.85848026326x plus negative 1635.732801313 into my y equals. That's how I would get my equation there. That sounds crappy. There's got to be a better way. <gasps> there is, if you listen right now. So if you have the new calculators, you went SAT, CALC, and you went 4, and you got this. You want to always stop at store regression equation because you want to store this equation where? In Y1, correct? You want to store it in Y1, don't you? We all agree? So this is how you do it this bullet at the bottom of E. So you go down, it says here, after picking the regression, you want to scroll down to store regression equation, then press VARS. VARS is here, it's beside the clear button. VARS, and then over to Y VARS, and then you're gonna go enter, and this, look, oh, here's Y1. Enter, look, did it put it there? Yeah, and then enter again, because you want it to calculate it. So now, if you have the new calculators, press Y equals. There better be an equation there, unless you bypass everything I just said. That's yeah. all Does everyone have it sitting in there? Yeah. 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 Yeah use this method to work for the fancy calculator, you know it looks like <laughs> It's like a glitch in like a few calculator. <laughs> 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 yeah, your screen looks like this, and then you press Y equals, and there should be an equation in it. <laughs> okay, I'll deal with yours in a second, because yours is probably that long one. Okay, actually, you're just going to follow what I do now. It's going to work the new method. The old method actually works for your new calculator. But just wait, because you might have just made a new C, and the new method might just work for your calculator. Okay, if you have the new ones, put your calculator down. You have an equation sitting there. Great, you should be happy. You can even quit listening to me if you really want to for the few seconds. You have the old calculators, okay? So for the old calculators, you're going to, you just went stat, calc, and then you went four. This didn't come up, but the word did. Linear regression came up, correct? If you have the old ones, who has the old ones? Put your hand so I know who I'm looking at. Okay, so you guys are going to press enter. And now the equation pops up for you, correct? So you guys, the equation pops up for you. You don't have a store regression equation spot or option. Like, you, you don't have that option, correct? So you have to go a different route to get it to store. So you now have the equation, we agree? Yeah. Go quick. 
So you on the older calculators, you're now going to use the older calculator steps. It says send the regression to y1 by pressing y equals. So the first thing you're going to, after you get that equation, you have the equation on your screen, correct? You're going to press y equals. And you're in y1 now. Everyone's on y1? Yeah. Okay. Now it says here, after, so it says send the regression to y equals. With the cursor in y1, do the following. Press bars. Bars is by the clear button. Then five statistics. So go down to number five. Hit enter. And then it says right arrow to equation menu. And then press enter. So you just put the regression equation in that spot. That old method actually works for the new calculators as well, if they bypass the regression equation thing. Does everyone have an equation sitting there right now? Every single one except for Rubless. Because I don't know if you have, a, you, might have a, you might have a wonky calculator. It's only the last type. You have to change windows, and it usually makes people freak out, but there's no reason to freak out. These are the best windows we can ever make. They give you the data in front of your face. You go to your table of values, and it helps you make the windows. Okay? So we're going to go to the window. What is my lowest X? Remember, list one is my X. What's my lowest X? 1996, it looks like, correct? So I'm going to go put 1990 here. I just go a little below. Okay? What's my highest X on this chart? 2009. Make sure not make this negative 1990. It's 1990. And then your X max is, I'm going to make it be 2015, a bit bigger. Now I'm going to leave my X scale be 1. I'll show you that you can change it, but for right now I'm just going to let it be 1 because if your stress level increases by not knowing what to make your X scale, just leave it be 1. It's not going to affect it, but I'll show you how it just changes the look of the graph, okay? So we're going to leave it be one. What's my Y minimum? What's the lowest my Y was? 78.04. 78.04. So I'm going to make mine be 70. What's the highest my max was? I'm going to make my Y max be 100. And then I'm going to leave my Y scale be one. Does everyone have that? Mm -hmm. And how did I figure it out? My chart. I just went to the table, went below the lowest and above the highest, right? No rocket science used. These ones are my favorite. They're the easiest windows to make. When you get a word problem without these, it makes it harder. So we press graph, and we get a line. Do you see how all these ticks show up? Because one is an actual appropriate scale for these ones. Because we were going from um, 1990 to 2015. That's just 25 ticks, technically, right? So one is actually a good scale for this. Here we're going from 70 to 100, that's just 30 ticks in that little spot, so it's not the worst. Okay? Everyone got to show up? Great, that's all we're doing today. Now, I mean, we're not done today. That's all we're doing for this question. That's all we're doing for this question. Okay, when you're done a question, paying attention, when you're done a question, the very first thing you are going to do is you're going to go to your Y equals and you're going to clear it out. Now, why do you do that? Because you're moving on to a new question, and if you move on to a new question, you sometimes will answer all your answers from your last equation because you didn't actually change your y equals equation. So at least if I clear it off, it's not there anymore. I can't accidentally use it for the next question. Okay? Okay, we're starting over. Stat. Edit. We're back to A. How do we clear these? Clear. Oh gosh. Yeah, we go up, clear, enter. Over, up, clear, enter. Now we're on the second example which says Matt buys t-shirts for a company that prints art on t-shirts and then resells them when buying the t-shirts. The price Matt pays is related to the size of the order. Five of Matt's past orders are here. Here's your list one, here's your list two. It's linear. So what I want you to do right now is get those into your list. So stat, edit, we start typing them in. And it does make a difference if you're not accurate and write the wrong decimal. 
So make sure that you don't go so rushing and then make an oopsie. If your equation doesn't match someone else's, it's because one of you typed them in wrong. So, once we have it into our lists, what do we do next? Go to your thing. It says for C. I mean not C. C, identify the polynomial, which we already have. It's linear. D, we press stat. Calc. This is a what regression? Linear. A linear. So we pick four. And then if you have the new calculators, you go down to store regression equation, and you go vars over to y vars. Enter, 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 enter. If you have the old calculators, you have to follow the older calculator's instructions. So once you get your equation and you hit enter and it shows up on your screen, you're going to go to your y equals and punch it in. Put your calculators down once you have an equation in your y equals. On this paper, highlight A. Are you following along? Highlight A. Highlight D. And then highlight whichever E you are. Because those are the steps, the big steps you have to do. A, D, E. Highlight A, highlight D, and then highlight whichever E you are doing. Don't highlight both of them, that's not helpful. A, D, and whichever E you use. Does everyone have an equation in right now? Mm -hmm. So we're going to go to window, mm -hmm. and we're going to change our window now. So we always get our equation, change our window. Get our equation, change our window. Get our equation, change our window. If you don't change your window, sometimes you can't see it. So what is our lowest number of shirts? What's our lowest X? 200. 200. What's the lowest number of shirts we could actually go to in the world? One. Zero. You could buy none. Put zero in there? Yeah. You could have made your lowest number of shirts be 100. I don't really care. It just needs to be below 200. Correct? Mm -hmm. Now your highest number of shirts is 740. Do so you need to make it above that? I'm going to go 900. You could go 800. You could go 1,000. I'm going to leave my X scale at 1 just, so you, just for now. And you can always leave your X scale and Y scale at 1 if it stresses you out. But I'll show you why you might want to change it. What's your Y minimum? What's the lowest Y? A dollar sixty-nine. It's a cost per shirt. So what's the lowest you could get to? Zero. And then the Y maximum? Five dollars and twenty cents. Let's. Six dollars. Yeah, I'll go eight. You could go six. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to leave my Y scale at one. Okay. I always just leave my Y scale and X scale at 1, and I'm going to press graph. What do we see here? Our Y scale works because I can see some ticks, correct? What's the problem with my X scale, though? There's so many ticks that it just looks like a black line. Okay? So I'm going to look at my X here for a second. I have 0 to 9, and every one I have a tick. So I technically, from 0 to 9 on that screen, that little teeny tiny screen, from 0 to 900, I have 900 ticks. Can you see them if there's that many on that short amount? No. So you can leave it at X scale and just not see them, not see any ticks. Or I'm going to go, hey, from 0 to 900, I'm going to make a tick every 100. Now can I see ticks? Yep. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. That's all that little scale means. If you leave it at 1 and it's a dark black line, that just means your scale is too small. Okay? Everyone has that on their screen? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to get you to start another question. So what are you going to do? Clear the Y. You're going to go Y equals. You're going to clear it out. I'm going to get you to go to example. We're going to go ahead a bit. So just practicing typing it in. Example 7. I want to show you something because people read example 7 wrong. Okay. Example 7. Put your, put whatever you're holding down, because you need your ears. So here it says the following table shows the average retail price of gasoline per liter for a selection of years in a 30-year period beginning in 1979. Now, people will go list, I will get people calling me over and they'll say, there's four lists, we've never done this before. You're right. You've never done it before. So maybe think, hmm, am I doing something wrong? That's what you should question. Okay. 
This is actually only two lists. They put them side by side so they don't have to use up a whole piece of paper. Watch. This is the years after 1979. This. Correct? What is this as well? Same thing. Same thing. Okay. This is the year, this is the price in liters, isn't it? Yeah. I could literally just take this piece right here, pick it up, and put it underneath the other one. And it would just be run really long table. It just would take up the whole page. So they put them side by side all the time like this. So this is year 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8, 9, 12, 14, 17, 20. This is all list 1. You see that? And then the purples are all list 2. Now the catch with this one is um, it's a cubic regression. So what are you going to do? Which is number 6. Number six. So type these in. Go. Type them in. Try and make a window. You should see a nice little curvy graph. So we're going to go stat, calc, cubic, bars, live bars. That should be the equation you have. 0 0.01, negative 0 0.46, 6 6.29. And sometimes they'll literally just ask you for like the D value of the cube equation. That's it. They'll make you find the regression and give them the D value and you move on. That's all they ask. What the graph would look like, window, I would go 0 to 40, let's say. And then 21, so 10 to 140, something like that. You should get like a curve like that. Did everyone get a curve? No. Your window's probably just different. Put your window like this and then check it. Change your window, then you'll know for sure if you have it right. Did you pick cubic number six? Yeah. You pick cubic for sure? It's a three? Or do you have a straight line in front of your face? Yeah. So go back, stat, calc, number six. And then repeat. You're going to try example 8 after it's very short. It's a quadratic regression. And then example 9, it's a cubic regression. So type in example 8 and example 9 when you're done and you've actually looked at them and saw that they actually are correct. The bell rings. <laughs> so 8 is quadratic. 9 is cubic. The first step you should always do is clear out your y equals. Oh.